Hello and welcome. This is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake and this is the 2021 Toyota Supra. If you recall, we've already had two other Supras here on the channel. We had a red 2020 and then we had a yellow 2021 earlier this year. So you're probably wondering why do we have this one? Well, the answer is easy for 2021. Not only did Toyota upgrade the six cylinder that comes in the 2021 Supra, they also added a four cylinder engine. So we're here to talk about what is different with that turbo four cylinder, talk about if it makes the car any different or better to drive, or if it just kind of comes across as the entry level model in the Supra lineup. And if you really need to get that six cylinder to actually have any fun with this car. Now, before we get into this video, please take a second and be sure to subscribe to the channel. The majority of people watching these videos aren't subscribed and we would love the support. The more we have from all of you, the more fun stuff we can do with cars like this Supra, trucks, SUVs, towing, motorsports, you name it, we're here to do it. So we would love that support. So thank you so much for subscribing. Now with that on to the Supra and this four cylinder engine. Now let's go ahead and pop the hood here. And of course, these cars are heavily related to the BMW Z4. So it should come as no surprise that what is under the hood here is another BMW engine. These cars are built by Magna Stair in Austria. They share a lot of parts and suspension geometry and all sorts of everything with the BMW Z4. And the four cylinder engine is of course no exception. It's already offered in a lot of BMWs, including that Z4, and it is called the B48. And how much horsepower and torque does it make in the 2021 Supra? Well, it makes 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. And the important thing to remember is that the torque figure comes in very low. As with a lot of turbocharged four-cylinder engines, the torque figure is what everyone leads with. And in the case of the 2021 Supra with the four-cylinder, it makes all of its peak torque starting at 1550 RPM. That is really, really low, very impressive figure. So beyond this B48 four-cylinder engine, let's talk about what else Toyota did to pull some weight out of this Supra. Like I said, by virtue of this being a four-cylinder versus a six, it's going to naturally be a lighter engine, which is great. You pull a lot of weight off the nose of the car. However, Toyota did a few other key things to the hardware of this four-cylinder Supra to help get more weight out of it. So starting off, let's look at the wheels. These are 18-inch wheels. The tire width is the same width as the six-cylinder cars, but it is an 18-inch wheel here instead of a 19-inch wheel. And then on the front axle, Toyota also downsized the brakes. They went down to a smaller size brake rotor, and they also went from a four piston caliper down to a single piston caliper on the front brakes. So that is what they've done up here. Also on all four corners, the six cylinder Supra has an active suspension. So the dampers are electronically adjustable. They will change their valving and adjust how stiff or loose they feel based on the drive mode that you're in. The four-cylinder Supra does not have that. It has fixed rate dampers. It's not the worst thing in the world if they're set up well. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. The other thing that Toyota did mechanically is they got rid of the electronically controlled limited slip diff. So the six-cylinder car has a differential that can lock up based on computer controlled inputs. So it can be very precise with how it's locking up. Toyota is not super clear here whether they went back to an open diff at the rear or if they went to a standard limited slip that does not have those electronic controls. But in any case, again, we'll see how it drives in just a minute. The other couple changes that they did are all focused on the interior. They lost the 14 way power adjustable seats from the six cylinder car and they went to a manually adjustable seat setup. The final piece of this whole car that is different is with the sound system. On the six cylinder cars, they have a 10 speaker JBL branded sound system. And here in the four cylinder cars, you lose the 10 speaker system and you have just a basic four speaker setup. So with all that, it may sound decontented. However, the six cylinder Supra weighs 3,400 pounds, which I don't find to be that heavy for a car that's kind of a GT car, kind of a sports car, if you will but Toyota got over 200 pounds out of it. And this car only weighs 3,181 pounds, which I think is fantastic for a car that's this big, that's this comfortable for six footers on a highway drive and can still be thrown around and have a lot of fun on a back road and autocross, a track day, that sort of thing. So with all that, let's close this hood and see how the 2021 Supra actually is with that four cylinder and all these other minor changes to drive. All right, so driving the 2021 Toyota Supra with the two liter four cylinder engine. Before we get too far into this, I wanna talk about where Toyota says this car should fit in their lineup. They make a very explicit point of saying that this car exists 
to offer a third option for the people who feel like they want something a little bit more than the Toyota 86, which is on the more entry level side of things, but they don't want or need or can afford the three liter version of the Supra because it does get a little expensive. What's interesting is all things identical, this Supra with the four cylinder is almost exactly $10,000 cheaper than the Supra that I drove earlier this year with the six cylinder. So yeah, it is a much more affordable option if you want a Supra in general, or if you want something that's a little different from the 86, but you maybe can't afford the six cylinder, or you don't want all of the kind of GT prowess that comes with having that six cylinder. Those cars are pretty good on a road course. They're great on back roads. They're certainly very fun, but this one is quite a bit lighter. And, you know, just in theory, will have a very different character to it. And it's interesting there, kind of romping on it through that little on-ramp curve, this car does feel pretty good. And like I said, they got a lot of weight out of it. They got over 200 pounds out of it. And a lot of that is off the nose between the smaller brakes, the single piston uh, calipers, and then the fact that this is um, just a four cylinder, not a six cylinder. There's, there's less weight going on up there. So the nose does feel pretty eager to turn um, and it feels nicely balanced. The other interesting thing with the four cylinder Supra versus the six cylinder, the six cylinder I find to have an excess of power, which I know some people are gonna say, there's no way you can ever have too much power. That's ridiculous, you're insane. Well, the six cylinder car wants to kick the tail out every time you drive it. And that is really fun. I really like the six cylinder cars. Um, they have a lot of personality. They're very charming, they're very endearing, but the, the four cylinder is not gonna be that, but it makes plenty of power and torque. Like I said, 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet, and the torque comes in very, very low. So it really feels plenty punchy, both around town and when you're getting on it a little bit. And the thing that I actually like about the four cylinder is that you have to work for it, for the power. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily love the six cylinder Supra because it makes so much power that you, you know, you can't get into it really hard before you're going take me to jail speeds. Whereas the four cylinder car, you can lay into it, wind out a couple of gears and you'll be going quick, but you're not going to be going felony speeds. And I do think that we have got caught up in this arms race of horsepower with pretty much every new car. I mean, even minivans come with a, an abundance of horsepower these days. And there is something to be said for the joy of you know sliding the shifter over, clicking down a couple gears, and having some power, but not an abundance. It's, it's plenty, but it's not ridiculous. And yes, I'm sure you can tune the four cylinder much like you can tune the six cylinder. People have got the six cylinders making insane amounts of power. And if you wanna do drag racing, if you want to win dyno competitions or whatever you do with 600 horsepower in a car like this, then yeah, go for it. But if you're looking for a car that feels more balanced and lets you work for it a little bit, it's, it's almost Miata-esque in how you work for the power. It does not feel as slow in a straight line as a Miata does, so don't get that too far burned into your brain as far as Miata-like. Power to weight ratio wise, which is what actually counts with all these cars, this is actually similar to a Miata. It's a little quicker, but they're right in the 12 point something pounds per horsepower range, whereas the six cylinder Supra is all the way down at 8.9 pounds per horsepower. So it's a very clear difference in how quick the car is. The reason this feels a little faster than a Miata does is because this has boost. This has that turbocharger where the Miata is naturally aspirated. So modern Miatas are not super duper slow, but this does feel similar in how you drive it. And that's all. Now, as far as everything else that's different, the suspension is, like I said, not adjustable. So the, the damper rates are what you get and you can't adjust them. And I think that's okay. I think it's a little firm for street driving, but uh, not excessively so. It just lets you know what kind of car you're in. And again, that's fine. That's the type of car this is. I don't want this to be a super soft car. But one thing that I'm glad Toyota did keep was the active exhaust. I'm in sport mode now. If I take it out, it will get a teeny bit quieter and back in sport you can feel it take on this little deeper baritone but 
I do like the fact that they kept the exhaust. They did try to add in a little bit of that pop and burble overrun sort of noise out of the exhaust. And I mean, I think it's kind of silly on, on the six cylinder Supra. So I'm glad that it's not really super prevalent in this one, but uh, it is there if you really listen for it. The other benefit of the four cylinder Supra is that power to weight wise, again, this lets you fit in some different classes. If you're thinking about motorsport, as many of us are, this car will let you fit in some different classes than the six cylinder cars would. So yes, you can do all the other mods that you would to one of these cars as far as suspension, wheels, tires, maybe brake pads, but you're making less horsepower, the car weighs less to start, and I've heard several people talking about what they would do if they bought a four-cylinder Supra versus the six cylinders that they've purchased. And that is no more apparent than in NASA's time trial classes. Those are power to weight classes with points added for modifications. And if you want to start with a lighter car in general, the four cylinder would be the one to do it with. So certainly an interesting thing to think about. Toyota is giving you a free NASA membership for one year, and they're giving you a NASA track day as part of your Supra purchase. So Toyota really wants to see these cars out on the track, whether they are four cylinders or sixes. And I think it's really great that a lot of people in the motorsports community who I reached out to when I had this car got very excited about having the four cylinder. So to answer the question I asked early on, do I think this is just, quote, the base model and you should avoid it at all costs? No, absolutely not. I think you should look at what works for you price-wise and you should see what you really value more because this one does feel lighter on its feet. It feels a little more nimble to me and I do like how it turns in a little bit more than the six cylinder just by virtue of having less weight up front. The one thing that I really, really miss is the sense of occasion that you get from driving the six cylinder Supra. Yes, it's all BMW underneath, but it is still a very good inline six. It sounds very good. And the Supra is a shouty car by nature of its design, by nature of what it is. And I, I do think you lose a little bit of the drama and the flair when you've got the four cylinder. It doesn't have quite the same bark when you start it up. It doesn't have all those noises that only an inline six can make. So do I miss the noise? Absolutely. Do I miss it $10,000 worth? I don't know. So as far as how I feel about this versus the six cylinder, which one I would personally buy. I really think it's a, a very personal decision and it's it's almost like one of those, you know, do you believe that every Ford Mustang has to have a V8 or are you okay with the notion of the really good EcoBoost cars? This is the same deal. If you believe that every Supra has to have an inline six cylinder and you're all hung up on the name and what it is, then sure, go buy a six cylinder. It's a really, really good car. If you care more about the overall driving experience and want something that's a little lighter, a little more nimble, a little more just not quite so GT car and a little more agile everywhere, I do think the four cylinder makes a really compelling case. Plus, like I said, with the classing, if you're gonna go compete in one of these with NASA or some other sanctioning body, it is really worth considering how the four cylinder versus the six cylinder fit into different classes. So certainly worth a drive, worth a thought. And again, it is $10,000 cheaper, give or take. So how much do you really like the noise afforded by the six cylinder? Yes, you get the fancy suspension and the fancy diff and the bigger wheels and better sound system and, and all those good things. But do you need all that? Or do you just want all that? We got by and made some really, really good cars to drive without all that before. And we all love new toys and, and more is better, but I don't think more is better some of the time. And I think this is a case where uh, more is just different. All right, and that is it for this review of the 2021 Toyota Supra with the two liter four cylinder engine and all of the other changes that Toyota has made. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, please be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube. Make sure to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a single thing going on here. You can also give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're looking to connect with other LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors, please head over to outmotorsports.com. We have a whole community of folks over there that would love to meet you and have you join us. Until next time, please stay safe, be well, and we'll see you again soon.